Welcome to the presentation on numerical simulation of imperfections in Miro Ori sandwich cores using isogeometric analysis. My name is Simon Thyssen and the work I'm going to present today was conducted here at Institute of Aircraft Design at University of Stuttgart in Germany. First, I want to talk about folded sandwich cores in general. These fold cores are created by folding a flat sheet of material into a three-dimensional structure, like you can see on the top. The fold pattern used here is the typical mirror or refold. And this fold core can then be placed between two face sheets to create a sandwich composite. The advantage over conventional sandwich core materials is that you can assign specific mechanical properties by choosing a fold pattern. Uh, for example, you can change the density of the fold um, or you can even change the geometry to a more complex design. To manufacture these cores, they are folded by applying external forces at specific points to basically push the structure up. As a result, depending on the geometry, the fold cores can deviate from the originally intended design, uh, which has flat face sheets and straight crease lines. Instead, geometric imperfections can form um, that show bended face sheets or rounded crease lines, like you can see on the right. Now, as I said before, the fold cores can be very well adapted to specific use cases, but this also means that the freedom of design of the fold cores is very large and it's not easy to actually choose the perfect design. Um, so a design tool is needed, which uses numerical simulations to evaluate different design options. And these simulations need to be quick, as usually many evaluations need to be done for parameter studies or optimization tasks. Also, geometric imperfections need to be addressed as they have great influence on the mechanical properties of the whole structure. This leads to a challenge for the simulation because on one hand, um, we have many necessary simulations and they ask for automated model setups. But on the other hand, these imperfections need to be considered and they need to be mapped on the numerical model. Um, this usually leads to the need of remeshing to accurately represent the deformations, but that's impractical in an automated process. And if the mesh is not changed, but just deformed, this may lead to discretization errors um, at the deformed mesh. So conventional finite element simulations are not really practical to perform this task. That's why we use the new approach of isogeometric analysis in this work, which allows to use spline or NURBS spaces functions for the numerical analysis instead of Lagrange polynomes like in conventional finite element methods. Um, on the bottom, it's illustrated how you can create a fold core with NURBS surface descriptions. On the left, you see how we would normally do it. We just have a set of parameters which describes how the fold core is built up in L and W direction. Um, this is a single unit cell, which is then repeated in both directions to create the whole fold core. On the right, we have the same core, but defined by a single NURB patch. It consists of a set of control points forming a control net and not vectors. This approach is what used in modern computer-aided design software as well. The isogeometric analysis can then be performed with this model definition without any further meshing or discretization. To set up the numerical model, three steps were performed. First, real samples of fold cores were manufactured. These were then measured with a 3D scanning system to identify typical imperfections for different mirror or geometries. After that, the imperfections could be mapped on the NURBS model. For that purpose, we can make use of the possibility to refine NURBS control nets with mathematical operations without actually changing the shape of the surface. So we can perform the necessary refinement and then manipulate the control points in a way that the surface fits the measurements that we did before. For the isogeometric simulation, an implicit time integration was used and to keep the calculation time slow, the model was also reduced to a single fold core cell, similar to the cell that we saw in the last slide. Um, this is possible by applying periodic boundary conditions at the cell edges to replicate the behavior of a full fold core structure. 
For validation of the numerical setup, we also did mechanical tests of two different mirror ori geometries under compressive loading, and the numerical results were then compared to the real test data. And you can see on the left that there's a good agreement between the results for compressive modulus and maximum compressive stress, so the model is validated for the compressive load case. Furthermore, on the right hand side, a parameter study was carried out where a cell was changed from almost a linear plate to an acute angled cell. Um, you can see the different geometries on the bottom. These results were compared to conventional finite element analysis, where the mapping of imperfections was done without remeshing in this case, leading to bigger discretization errors. You can see very clearly that the finite element results overestimate the mechanical properties and are also diverging further for flat angles as the imperfections play a bigger role there. So this shows quite good that the advantage of isogeometric analysis for fold core is quite big, especially when considering imperfections and means an improvement in accuracy. So to sum it up, we developed a new simulation process for folded sandwich structures with consideration of imperfections. And for that, first a new geometry description using NURBS patches was introduced. Then the imperfections were measured and were mapped on the model. And um, with this, the isogeometric analysis could be performed, showing good agreement to real test data. So the whole process is fully automated and can be integrated in optimization tools or similar, which gives us a framework for high accuracy automated numerical simulations. So thank you very much for listening. And if you do have any questions now, feel free to ask them or contact me. Thanks.